Our final speaker for day one of our just forming is joining us from Vancouver in Canada. I guess like the day is only starting for you if I check the time zones correctly. So it's quite crazy that we have people from all over the world in the same event in the different times. And Alistair is Agile coach also for Motorola Solutions. And he is striving to unlock the true potential of individuals, teams, and organizations. And all of that um, totally remotely because like, he spent only a week in the office before the COVID hit. And today, in, with his topic of Scrum Showcase, he will discuss, so what is the value of the Scrum rules and how, to, how can we accelerate the shift from doing Agile to being Agile? So Alistair, our virtual stage is yours. Welcome. Thanks, Aunt Veronica. So um, let, I will stop the sharing and you'll you. be able to add your presentation now. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen yeah. now. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to talk to you about the Scrum Showcase um, that we ran with the Core Media team um, in the Vigilon uh, video security and analytics part of Motorola. Um, before I get into what what the Scrum Showcase is, um, I'd like to just talk to you about um, why 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 we did it. So. There was various forums. We had uh, quarterly team health checks um, with all our software development teams. Um, there is uh, product management and engineering management came together to discuss the role of, of product owner. Um, and, and what came out of all those forums really was uh, three, three or four main things. So there was no real feedback loop between end users and our developers and those that were close, such as product managers, found it fa uh, hard to find the time to dedicate the amount of time needed to the Scrum teams to give them the understanding of the, the end user. Um, and kind of coupled in with that, there was a lack of understanding of the true value of what um, teams were working towards. And there was a real risk of us potentially building the wrong thing and taking the wrong thing to the market. Um, and also thrown in with that, there was a lack of collaboration across teams um, and across our, our cloud and our on-prem product. Uh, we have different sites in Boston, Dallas, uh, Vancouver. So lack of collaboration there. And throwing it all into that, we were, we said, well, we've been on our agile transformation journey for a, a fair few years. And we said we were following Scrum. Um, and what we realized were we, we were only following Scrum by process only. So we were only doing the ceremonies really. Um, we didn't have the dedicated product owner role. We had a lot of split roles, Scrum masters, such as project manager, Scrum master, developer, Scrum master. Um, so we realized that the, the Scrum roles and the product owner and, and Scrum master were, were really missing within our teams and they could potentially help with a lot of the problems we were facing. So what did we actually do? Um, so Alex, uh, who was a manager, joined as a temporary uh, product owner. So he was mainly focused on providing the use end user perspective. Maddie joined as a scrum master, dedicated scrum master. Uh, so focused on helping the team be the best they can be. We had Mustafa, who was the team lead before. I'm still, I'm still unsure. It was different on each team as to what the team lead's role was. It was really a catch-all to be the focal point for whenever someone needed something from the team. So it was a real variety in the team lead role within teams. Um, so Mustafa relinquished that role and became developer. And Jared. Um, was a Scrum Master slash developer, um, and he decided to focus solely on, on being a developer. So, and they were all, and that was Team Core Media, and they were all supported by me in an agile coaching capacity. So I was mainly focused on giving them the theory and help bring it to life, um, really. And the duration of this ended out, uh, turned out to be three months, um, which, 
is is not a long time, but it was an experiment just taking one team and seeing like what what value can these roles actually bring. So I'd like to do a quick poll, and I know this is very early on, but um, I want to ask you in the scrum teams you work with or the scrum teams you're in, um, how are your how are the scrum role structured? So do you do you have a lot of split role scrum master? Product own, uh, product own, sorry, Scrum Master developers, for example, or uh, product owners, are they represented in any capacity? Um, or do you just not have all the roles? And this is the first time I'm using polling in the spirit of experimentation in Zoom. So let's see how it goes. And I'm actually really enthused by the fact that the majority of re respondents so far have full-time roles. That's really good to see. I'll just give you a few more seconds for those that haven't voted. Okay. So as you can see, um, the vast majority, well, yeah, the vast majority have full-time scrum roles, which is really good. Um, the, the people that uh, have the split roles or don't have all the roles, um, I, I just question, so what's the reason for that? Is it because um, you're not far enough along on your agile journey or you've tried the roles um, and they haven't worked, I'd love to hear your perspectives on that. So if you could maybe comment in the Slack channel um, for this session, that would be great to catch up with you after after the session. Okay, so we added all the roles to the team. Um, oh, why did we do that? So what did we hope to achieve? Um, these are the hypotheses that we wanted to test. So would having the dedicated scrum roles enable us to have a happier team, um, deliver value quicker, and ultimately deliver the right value. So this is what we set out to achieve, and this is what we were going to test throughout and, and at the end of the three-month experiment. So um, where did we start? So team call media, I just, there's a lot of data here. Um, I wanna pull out a, f a few key points. So the main problem was there was an unwieldy product backlog. So as you can see, we had tickets that were 832 working days old on average. So that's a lot of years that those tickets have been there and haven't been closed or dealt with. Um, and there were also 324 tickets on the back product backlog. Um, I read somewhere that any, anything over 100 and people just forget about it. They just don't even look at the backlog. Um, so that was one, one main area of focus that we wanted to really change. Um, multiple sprint goals is another one. It, it was creating almost sub teams within the team. People were just spread thin. They didn't really have focus. They weren't working together like a, a, a true high performing team would. And the main other thing that was really impactful was there was a, a massive amount of, of sprint scope changes. Um, it averaged around 20 story points every sprint for the last sprint, six sprints that, that they've been on. Um, I think their velocity on average was maybe around uh, 30 points. So as you can see, 20 points is quite a big percentage of that to have 
scope change. So how did we actually go about conducting the experiment and what, like, how did we continuously improve? So the, um, so me as an agile coach, I had regular one-to-ones with the product owner and scrum master who were both new to their role. Um, well, Maddie had um, one team previously, so she had a bit, bit more experience, but um, also, Maddie conducted sprintly one-to-ones with team members. Um, we had regular retrospectives, not only as a full team in the in the sprint retrospective, but um, myself, the product owner, and the scrum master did also have one every week before the retro, just to reflect on what on our roles and how we've been doing. Um, we did share a lot of that in the team retro as well. We also made sure with any improvements we were making we stayed focused so in the realm of the scrum masters uh, maddie was focused on the team so any improvements there were solely focused on the team alex was focused on the product backlog and and i was really focused on the improvements in the, in the training i was delivering uh, and the coaching and we of course, we conducted this experiment over three months. That's quite a long time to not track or understand how we're doing. So, um, excuse me. Um, we tracked these um, continuous improvement um, experiments in the experimentation log, that, and that was kind of organic. We didn't set out with an idea of, oh, we'll create this experimentation log and add to it. It just kind of happened. Um, and I'll, I'll share that later on in, in the presentation. So we had also um, another retro to basically look at these um, graphs that I created um, in Easy BI. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's basically a tool that pulls data out of JIRA. Um, so we looked at those and, and a lot of those graphs were there to show, well, test the hypotheses or see if we're on the right track. Um, and, and track those data points that I shared at the beginning. Uh, we also, I sent out pulse surveys to the team and I'll, I'll show you some of the questions later, but that was just just getting some feedback from them on how they were, you know, how you're feeling out of 10, whatever, um, and in different areas to just get an idea of how the team were doing. It was a two minute survey. And, I had I delivered a lot of training sessions. So over the, the three months, um, delivered 11 training sessions. These are the sorts of things. So some, some basic ones initially to set us up. So what are our roles? Um, and we started off getting everyone on the same page about why Agile. So why Agile over Waterfall? Um, and and also a key one, what is Agile in terms of the mindset first, rather than focusing on processes and, and things like that. Uh, we also, this was probably the most valuable, I think, to the team. And shout out to Tom Winter, Martin Hash, if you're, if you're uh, watching. Um, we got in touch with, with them and they, they got um, the Zeppelin team to, so the Zeppelin team are a team that are further on in their Agile transformation um elsewhere in motorola um and basically they just came and did a q a with with core media and the feedback from that was amazing they they just they loved getting feedback and seeing a team that had gone further on the journey and and actually seeing that it does help um and can transform a team and we also got them back for another q a uh, later on as well so there's, there's a lot we're doing to continuously improve. Um, and now I'd just like to dig deeper into the experimentation and the experimentation log. So we treated the showcase as one big experiment. So we had three months with one team, all these roles to really show what, what we could do. Um, and we implemented experiments around um, these key themes that came out in the end. Um, 
So the green ones are around the team, the purple ones are around the product backlog, and the blue ones are around um, agile coaching and training. Um, so we tracked all these in an experimentation log, which I'll, this is a snapshot of it. Um, so as you can see, so we, we did these and then we reflected on them. So we inspected and then we adapted and did other off experiments off the back of uh, the experiments we implemented. Um, and then we repeated that. And in total over the three months, we did 32 experiments, um, which was quite a lot, um, but we did see a dramatic improvement um, in the team and the way and the way we were going really. Um, but I'm, you don't need to listen to me and I'll just show you that the hard facts. Um, oh, actually, before I get on to the hard facts, I'd love to hear about how you experiment in your team. So obviously that's what, one way we, we did it. Um, I'd like you all to just share your experiences in the Slack channel now, if you could, um, and I can, fla I can flash up the Slack channel to see if there's any, any comments in there. So how do you experiment in your teams? Do you experiment or do you not experiment? Uh, do you experiment in your product? I'll just give us a, f a few minutes now. Yeah, so a lot around uh, small incremental experiments, um, mostly around, uh, well, around process, for example. Um, just sharing another experience from one of my other teams. Uh, we did have a, they had a Kaizen board and they'd they'd take an experiment and, and trial it for every so long, it'd be visible for everyone. And then they reflect on that. Um, another one here. Yeah, so it, improvement in the, well, experiments in the product. Um, we haven't got that far yet, I don't think. Um, so I'd, yeah, I'd love to follow on that one. Yeah, proof of concepts. Um, yeah, break off a chunk and, and try that and prove that it does actually work. Uh, the single biggest benefit from the changes I've made, I'll, we'll get onto that in a second. Um, experiment with delivery do you want to go any further detail on that okay so uh a lot of different ways there actually so product ways delivery uh process improvements so that's really good uh keep keep adding them to the slack channel i will check that afterwards uh and hopefully you can have some more conversations So here we go, drum roll. 
the hard hard data what did we actually achieve um a big thing so this was a, a lot of heavy lifting i mean we got the the average ticket um on the backlog had only been there 440 working days which is still way way too long in in my in my view um but you know almost half what we had initially and a much more manageable but still maybe too many 87 tickets on the product backlog um but to do that in the period of three months yeah was, was really good uh we did that now the pro oh, alex uh alex well the whole team i guess sat down we uh we tagged all the the tickets by a theme um so like if it was technical debt a technical debt theme example uh for example and we just go through those different themes and cut them down um and there was a lot of prioritization around are we going to fix it in the next two sprints if not let's close it it's been there years um one single sprint goal so we trended towards that so we did do some training on sprint goals um and it, with along with that the team was aimed in one direction and really we're, we're looking at uh focusing purely on getting the sprint goal done as a priority um the other thing i'll call out is um well, this is probably the biggest impact actually. Um, and we did switch to monthly releases at the same time, which might have helped with this, but um, scope changes trended right down. So Alex as the product owner was really strict on what came into the sprint. So unless it was something on fire, it didn't, it didn't come in. Um, and I don't think the team had ever felt like they could do that before or, um, ever had anyone to shield them, whether that be the product owner or scrum master. So um, that trended down to an average six points every sprint, but as you can see, it got down to pretty much zero. Um, a couple of things I'll say in the three months we didn't, um, well, I, I would have liked to have seen improve, but they didn't, um, was flow. So flow through the sprint. Um, so flow in terms of, tickets getting to done in the sprint um they still took the same amount of time really um and there was still bottlenecks where they'd, they'd stay in certain columns um but i would have anticipated that to uh, increase over time in terms of flow um and another thing is hit rate so the the amount that the, the team put into the sprint and how much did they actually achieve. Um, so that did increase. So they got more predictable in terms of what they could deliver. Uh, the poll surveys, I did um, I did say I'd show you some of the questions. Uh, these weren't mandatory to fill out. So we had different people filling them out. Um, and we didn't, in hindsight, we probably should have used them in the retros. So we did send them out after the retros, but we should have used them as a talking point with the team and we didn't really throughout uh, but these are the so we didn't really gain much value from them but uh here's some of the questions in case uh you were wondering uh this was basically we had quarterly health checks with all the teams which is obviously every quarter a lot can happen um so i tried and condensing that down it's something that can be sent out every sprint um so these are similar questions, but not the same. So yeah, testing things like learning. Do you have a learning culture? Um, are people having fun? This was a key one during COVID, obviously. Um, and some of these are hard to read into. Like, do you feel like you're completely honest with the team? Well, if you don't feel like you're honest, how can you score high on? Well, you're not going to be honest in this score, for example. So yeah. Um, so this is the the data directly from the team in terms of what they the main things they thought that we achieved 
um, teamwork, a better sense of team and goals. Uh, these are some of the main ones, um, as well as more awareness of value in the backlog. Yeah, it's just all in all, there's a lot of a great sense of team, great sense of understanding of value, um, and certainly more collaboration within the team. And if you remember the the key things at the beginning of the session, um, this clearly helped to address some of those. Um, and we got them to basically just still let down into the the main things overarching they all thought that we achieved. So. The main thing was a common understanding of Agile and Scrum in terms of the mindset rather than process and getting everyone on the same page with that um, and then bringing it to life in terms of experimentation culture. So th those are the, the main things for the team that they achieved in the, that we achieved in the three months that, that they've basically taken on and they're, they're in new teams now. Um, they actually got split in half, but they, they've taken that forward and it's been acknowledged that they've taken what they've learned to the new teams and really, really put it into practice. But as with all things, uh, things can go better. Um, and there's always room for improvement. So the team wanted it to go on for longer. So the reason why it didn't go for longer was there was um, there was a, a reorganization going on um, to put dedicated scrum masters and product owners in teams. So this this experiment kind of well the, the reorganization kind of leapfrogged the experiment almost, but the experiment then backed us up that the reorganization we were doing was a step in the right direction. Um, and that the, the new roles do add value. Um, more exposure from other teams. Um, yeah, I mean, I mentioned that before. They really valued meeting other teams further along in their agile journey. Um, the one thing I realized about training was I, I did them once a week, and then I realized that that's, you know, people learn li little and often. So, certainly with for example, the sprint goals one, I did, I sent round sprint goals every day and said, you know, critique this sprint goal. Um, and that kept them thinking about the topic for the week. So I started having a, a weekly training theme where I'd um, reinforce it every day rather than just doing one big bang training session every week. Um, Another thing was the, the experimentation log. So as I said, it grew organically and over time, and we didn't actually share that until the end. So whilst the team were aware, the whole team was aware of some of the experiments on there, and they weren't aware of all of them. And we didn't show that until the very end. And there was, I don't think there was a real reason for that. Um, we just not, never got around to doing it. Um, and I do think if we'd have shared it sooner, we probably would have got more more ideas for better experiments. Another thing that we we didn't um, take into account is obviously we restructured one team, but we didn't communicate that that well to the rest of the business that interacted with uh, the team. So, okay, you've no longer got a team lead. So who do I go to for X, Y, and Z? Um, so we could have done a better job of that and communicating that to the rest of the business initially. But those are some of the improvements that could have been made. So I guess coming back to our hypotheses at the start, um, and I'll zoom in because these, these numbers move around. Um, as you can see, the key things are that we started making at least a minor improvement in all these areas with the new team structure, um, some more than others. Um, but in, in a, a short three months time period, I, I do think we achieved a great deal. And I guess um, the overarching point 
that we're trying to share was that the dedicated scrum roles help us to be more effective than the, the old team structure with the team lead at the helm. And everyone, it was resounding, like everyone thought, yeah, way better team structure. Um, and I'll say just, it was first time an Agile coach, we'd had an Agile coach work with a team, um, with a Scrum Master and, and Product Owner in place. So they found that really valuable actually um, and the coaching slash training. So yeah, I guess the, the key point is this one. So we, we proved that we, we should basically uh, look to have dedicated Product Owners and Scrum Masters um, working with teams um, and that reinforced that the the org org change we were making um was the right direction uh, a step in the right direction on our agile transformation um so if they had to recommend the scrum showcase to the friends uh, this is what the team said you can read some of those i'll zoom in on this one because i think it is one of the better ones. Yeah, so this kind of sums up um, the things that we achieved. We achieved, you know, a more stable team and a, a more of a team. So the main question, um, or the final question, uh, would Steve have been happy with the Scrum Showcase? Uh, we think he would have been. Um, we definitely demonstrated the value of the having the, the three Scrum roles, developers, product owners, and Scrum Master. Um, and yeah, uh, it leapfrogged us on, on our Agile transformation. So. And that's the end of everything I have to say. Um, I can now open up to questions. And stop my show. No. So yes. allow me to share the Slack window. I think we have like one or two. Uh, so share. I think, I hope that you are able to see that. And the Alistair channels. Okay, yep. so we had yeah. one that appeared earlier and also one from Amanda. Ah, okay. Yeah, so I can answer the, the what do you think is the single biggest benefit from all the changes? Um, I think the biggest benefit was start getting people to understand that you can't. Well, it, Scrum isn't just a, a process, right, that you can follow. Um, and it, if you are going to follow Scrum by the book, at least um, follow it by the book and don't pick and choose um, the things you like. Um, and getting getting everyone understanding that Agile is a mindset. It's not just something you can do. Um, you've actually got to, you know, live and breathe it. And And... And we've still got a way to go with that, but I do think that people are are coming along on that journey and understanding that now. Uh, why did honesty? Yeah, I don't know on that one. That this that one did baffle us actually. Um, I'd like to think. I mean, we didn't we didn't ask the team, but <laughs> I'd like to think the more honest you get the more you realize that you haven't been honest so then you would rate your score lower so for example if a team gets more psychologically safe you'll realize that actually we don't share enough and we we aren't open and honest with each other and hence that's maybe why the drop but i i don't know that that's what i'd like to think but whether that's that in reality um i don't know <laughs> 